planted on on his local situation. That does. does it, you think that's anything to that? Yes, I think it could be. Dobriansky, remember Dobriansky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got an awful pain. Yeah. But he's also got a lot of people, uh, a lot of checks, a lot of folks in there that would want us to be trading. I would think so. Now, did you see the Hoover letter today? Yeah. You mean the... Uh, yeah, saying that... Uh, that uh, I, I've got it on my desk, and I talked to uh, old... Uh, Catson back about this the other day, and I, I seen the one that he said this was. A, you're talking about the one in reply to, to Russ letter. Yeah, we decided that's the way to do it. Yeah, I wish I could get him to go a little further. I would. You think it, you wouldn't have any objection if I wrote him another letter to try to get him to say he didn't oppose it? He won't quite say it in so much language. That's certainly the implication of his reply. I wouldn't do it but a letter because he's so suspicious of letters and he's investigated all of his life. But I'll tell you what I would I do. Did. I've already written him a letter, you know, and asked him to appear. I'll tell you what I would do. He, some, didn't, want, he didn't do that. If I didn't mind it, I don't, you're not very strong on these departments, but I'd call him some morning and say, all right, if I drop by your office and... Uh, uh, I would, it would be all right, could you come up here and and see me for a little bit, and then... Well, you don't like me much, you know, over that McCarthy business. Well, I don't make a damn. He, he, no, I don't think he does. I think it, he's a he's a very peculiar fellow, and he's a very... Uh, he's been around the goddamn thugs all of his life so many that he doesn't trust his mother, I'm afraid. And uh, what I think you could do, and I think I've made some headway, I think what you could do is say to him, ask him, drop by, say, would you mind coming by? I want to get some... I want to get some advice from him. He wants to be popular with the Congress, and he would want to be popular with you, and he would consider it a compliment. And you could just say to him, now, as I understand it, if we have uh, more consular offices in this country, of course you'll have to have uh, more money and more protection. We understand that. But uh, I gather from your letter here that you're really not opposing this thing. What you're pointing out is the problems that you would conceive and the expense would be required. My judgment is he'd probably say that's exactly right. And then you could say, well, if you don't mind, I'll drop you a little note and you reply to it. Then I would have him to lunch following that, and we might get a might get a real firm commitment. He, If you write him first, he's going to be skittish that he's trying to get be made a record out of him. But yeah. if you just take this Rusk letter and say... All I did was just in a uh, routine letter to say we'd be glad if you cared to uh, to testify. And he wrote back and said he'd written a letter, but he, he, he referred me to the Attorney General or something. I forget now what it was. It was, it was a nice letter, but it didn't say a damn thing. I got the impression from one of his men that wasn't he in before the Rooney Committee when this happened? The appropriation Committee. And what I think he said, that if you open up, if you have this kind of agreement, you have these Russians scattered all over the country, that you're going to have to have somebody watching them. And if you do, it's going to cost a hell of a lot of money, and about like that. And I think you're making a pitch to protect his funds rather than to keep them out. Now, that's my judgment, but uh, uh, I'll make a run at it if you don't, but uh, I, I would prefer to follow you. <laughs> If you feel like it, you ask him to drop by. And... Yeah, I, I don't know whether he still remembers it or not, but they were awful mad at me when I made a... You know, in the height of that McCarthy thing, he made a speech praising McCarthy out in California, and I made reference to it, and I thought that they'd gone mighty far, and that I didn't care to give them any more information as long as I thought they made it available to McCarthy. And all oh, they sent that Lou Nichols up here to tell me, oh, they didn't do it. I said, the hell you don't do it. It was right there. He had it by his elbow and said he was reading from it. Well, I think, of course, I think he did have it. And anyway, they kind of got pissed off. Me, well, maybe it's not the thing to do. I'll follow it. Anyway, I think it's uh, something to do. And uh, we're going to have, I hope you're free, uh, we're going to have this signing, you know, or... Uh, uh, I told Goldberg to talk to you about it on the space thing, and I believe it's going to be the 27th. So that's next, uh, not far, today's the the 20th, and I think that'll help pave the way a little bit. Well, hell, I've got to make a speech to a bunch of...
Uh, one of you make more. What? How much you and Morris making these speeches? I made a damn one this year. What do you charge? You and Barkley, twenty five hundred a round or three thousand? No, I don't. Uh, this is this is because Benny's aunt's down there, and I took advantage of a free trip uh, <laughs> to making a speech. Uh, I saw you ran out last night before Strom Thurmond told you where the hell the cow uh, ate the cabbage. The you and this old Strom getting ready to get up. You you and Joe Clark went to disarmament. We old Joe, Phil Foster, to ask us long time ago, and I hated to back out such a late date. I didn't care about hearing from him. Well, he's anything. got the answers if you just listen to him. God almighty. He gives me the willing. He says that the thing, that it, the, the trouble is that these targets, that you don't know anything about the targets, that you're not hitting the right target. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I hope you can get those goddamn people to talking over. I really, I hate when I see all those figures and all those amounts and so on. You know, it's just awful. You're not going to get them to talking until they convince they can't win here. And you just let them know here the statement that you made a long time ago that they, they, that they can't win here. The Hawks are more in control than anybody else. And they're stronger than the president. When they convince that, I'm convinced that you can sit down and get an agreement with them on the, you're 54 and 62, and maybe you have an election there, and uh, with the understanding that we'll just pull out and abide by the results of the election, just like we did in the Dominican Republic. Well, I, uh, I, I have so fair deal, but the, you got to get the first step. And that is, I, I don't think you can ignore the Viet Cong. They're the bastards that are fighting. We're not ignoring them. They'll, when they get ready to transact this business, they'll, you encourage they'll you. take the Viet Cong just exactly like we'll take South Vietnam. Just Why don't exactly. you encourage that damn assembly? Somebody, some of those native South Vietnamese, not key to general, but whoever's in there is coming in that constituent assembly, encourage them very quietly through your... CIA or somebody to get in communication with the Viet Cong and say, for Christ's sake, let's have an election and see if we can have settled this thing. We're just killing each other for nothing. They they are just as much uh, under the control of uh, of the North Vietnam Bill as uh, that little stenographer that you sent out uh, takes your direction. It's just the same way. And uh, they got just about as much independence as the uh, Sharecropper in Mississippi. This is an approach to them. Maybe they they would then put it up to the north. Whenever, whenever the, you see these people, don't want they don't want uh, anybody to know they're messing with us, and they don't want the Viet Cong or the Chinese to know it. But they see what's happening in China, and they they see the days are numbered with Russia's having to force everything. So they're going to talk if uh, things just keep on. They're hollering too much not to want to talk. All this yelling, you see your friend Ashmore today with his story, he's coming in. This, this business, uh, they're going to talk in a reasonable length of time, in my judgment, if we don't blow it here. And if they decide they, they can uh, wait until the next election, why well, they might do it, see if they blow it to election. Otherwise, they'll talk. And when they talk, we can make reasonable terms. We can let them bring whoever they want to. They want the Bitcoin to come there. Their voice will be heard, as we've said. But uh, they're going to write the ticket. And uh, uh, I think that well, the insurmountable thing has been removed by Manila, which you all laughed at. But uh, when we told them in Manila that we weren't going to stay there, that we'd come home, and said it publicly all over the world, and all eight of them agreed, and South Vietnam agreed, they didn't want us. And we'll come out of there just as soon as you have the election, just like we did the Dominican Republic. Uh, then I think that's what's going to get it done, if we do it. I think whether we do it or not is whether they think that uh, they can wear us out here. And they, if they think they can, they'll do it because they want that to Otherwise, they'll be willing to settle it. And I think that uh, I think that the Indonesia thing is just kind of waiting to, to see what happens, too. I think that they'll be throwing Sukarno out for too long, and they'll be willing to put two or three divisions of their own in there. I think they can see that. They can see China crumbling up. And uh, uh, this is getting closer to a solution if we just don't blow it and we don't uh, we go water statements. They hurts us. It'll just give us hell because he's been out and he's got all the dope about how they're being restrained and restricted. 
And the storms, if it had been public last night, would have hurt us. He's just back, and his was all on the targeting and, uh, and not using our weapons. Some of Dick's statements the same way. The Joint Chiefs, how do we keep them? Uh, your man from Arkansas and the rest of them suppressed, I don't know. But uh, we're doing it pretty good. We can hold out just a little while longer. I think that, uh, I think that uh, they don't fight anymore. They get out of the way, you see. And uh, they just, it's, it's, it's awfully hard on them. And what they want us to do, and there's some targets that we ought to take, the steel mill and the damn cement thing and stuff that they're manufacturing. But we've held back because they're so close and they're so basic. And there's such a change. We're not going to hit their dikes or their water or their civilians or their cities or anything like that. But everything you hit, you kill some. It's just a question of how many. Uh, and, uh, uh, but there, there's some things we could make it much harder. But they're having hell now. they got thousands and hundreds of thousands repairing, trying to keep going. And it's not easy for them. And they're not going to do that. They're not going to do this much longer. And if we can, uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, they wouldn't, I don't think they'd be sending their folks back and home. They're going back and forth now, you see, with these messages. Uh, so uh, we just got to hold a stiff upper lip and be careful and don't uh, rock the boat. Don't, uh, when these folks go to making these speeches, just get off the floor. Don't get in debate with them. Just let, let Strom ignore them. Just, uh, you can't answer them. And I just hope that Goldwater, I don't want to, somebody said I ought to have him come in and report to me because he is the nominee. And I said, the hell with a nominee. I don't want any reports like this. I want to play him down as much as I can. I read you what a Navy Admiral said. I don't know who he is and I can't find the damn fellow. But he got right into the conference table, right in the middle of it, right in Warsaw. And they just came up and said, well, the hell with it. Here, this Johnson, this man wouldn't be speaking without him. And they interpret interpret what uh, what he says uh, as representing me just like you'd say when Gromyko says something that that's a Soviet line. Oh, I'll be damned. They don't understand our system. That's the great danger. That's been a danger in all these wars we've had. The people misjudge us. Yeah. Okay, you give me what I wanted. I don't want to take all day, but I did want to find out about these folks and okay. keep it silent. And now listen, uh, and when I have to change out there, I'm seriously thinking, I talked to you about this once before, but you may have forgotten it. My number one problem in Vietnam, as I see it, is what we clean up to try to administer it and pacify it. If Lodge gets out of there, I'm inclined to put Westmoreland over in his place. Well, it's become such a major military matter, I guess it's... Uh... He's level-headed, he's quiet, he'll cooperate, he'll do what we tell him to do. He doesn't fight with us, he holds the the folks in line. He's got the prestige. He knows the country. He can make he and them act, and he has with the Constituent Assembly and other things, and I believe will be more effective than Lodge. If Lodge comes out of there, and Lodge is going to come out of there after the Constituent Assembly gets out of the way, in my judgment. And uh, you said once before, well, it's military anyway, and I wouldn't want a military man in other countries, but for the transition, just trying to get where we can feed these refugees, where we can take care of these people, where we can protect what we run, o what we have cleaned up. And I believe that if we're going to have a pacification program, Bill, it's awful hard to get these aid men, these State Department men, to manage a job. They're not managers. No, that, that situation is awful. Yes, it is. It's so goddamn bad. You can it has to be all in the military operation. Okay. That's all right. Do you know Westmoreland, though? No, I don't. I wish you did. Uh, why didn't you? Why don't you go to Vietnam? Oh, Jesus, I'm too old. Oh, I don't know what you. Oh, huh? You're not too old to run around here and make speeches. Arthur Goldberg's going out there and next month, and you could ride out there with him. Be back in ten days. I promised Mike I'd go to Mexico with him. Well, that's good. I'm far Mexico. They, they, that's that. They're judging us by how we get along with their neighbors. They want me to come to Canada. I wish you'd take that engagement. Well, I've been to Canada. I was down there last fall for that same reason. I, I, I had a hard time getting anybody in my committee to go there. But, but Mike called me to go down to Mexico. I've never been there. So well, I, I think you ought to go. I think it's, uh, that it's better now, they tell me, than it's ever been. They're great big 
tough prize fighter here on one side, and they feel a little anemic. A uh, uh, 16-year-old there, and we, they live in our shadow. But uh, they tell me now the second man came in the other day, Boonstra, and I appointed him ambassador to Costa Rica. He's been there 10 years, chief of mission. He said it's by far the best relationship to us they've ever had. He said when you call up, you can be in the president's office himself in 30 minutes. He said this president is not going to be as popular politically as uh, this or uh, as, uh, as the fellow preceded him, I forgot, uh, because he is... Uh, uh, he does work with the Americans, so and he thinks that we, uh, we're we're in excellent shape. But the more attention we give him, I think Mike's had a lot to do with it too. And George Aiken, they've been messing around down there every few months, and I think it'd be a wonderful thing. If you